So in this video, um, we're going to talk about how to solve non-homogeneous linear equations okay, uh, with constant coefficients. Okay. Uh, so the idea, okay, the general idea is that uh, we're going to solve, basically solve for the homogeneous part first. Uh, that is when you have the right-hand side is zero. And then we're going to use uh, what's called the trial function. To solve for the corresponding non homogeneous part. And then once we have those, then we're going to add those together and that will give us our general solution. Okay. All right, so here's the general uh, nth order differential equation that we're going to look at. Okay, so each coefficient that you see here is constant. Okay. okay, so there's the general form that we have, okay, where we have a sub or each a sub value. A sub value is basically just constant, okay. And then you have your uh, differentials here, okay. So the overall process is that we first find the homogeneous solution. And what do they call that y of h? Okay, so that is when g of x is equal to zero. So we have this form, right? And then this right hand side is, is equal to zero. And we can do that um, using the techniques that we that we uh, talked about uh, previously. Okay. Where you have again constant coefficients and the right hand side would be zero. So you could, so in that case, you would, uh, based on whatever is given, you would formulate your auxiliary equation, or sometimes we call it the characteristic equation. And then from there, you would obtain the roots and then just plug it into uh, you know, whichever case you have, uh, which will depend on the discriminant. Okay. If that's, if it's a second order. Um, and then from there, if you have something higher than second order, uh, then you can uh, generalize those cases that we talked about last time. Okay, and then, so once we do this, once we find the homogeneous solution, then we can find the non-homogeneous uh, solution. And that is what we call the particular solution. And so YP being standing for the particular solution. There. In some books, um, they, they call this the complementary function. Right? or complementary solution, okay? Um, and sometimes it's to it as Y of C, okay? But it's all, it's the same idea, okay? All right. Okay, let's see. Okay, so there are some limitations uh, to this technique, okay? Um, and by the way, this technique is called, um, uh, it's, it's basically called uh, the method of undetermined coefficients. Okay?
Okay. And so the uh, the idea of this of the second part is that we have to look here uh, what type of function we're given. Okay. And then we use based off what we see here we we come up with a general function. Okay. And that is what's called the trial function. Okay. And then once we once we have a trial function, okay, then we substitute that, okay? So what I mean by trial again, it's just a general function, okay? We take that general function and plug it back into here, all right? Equate it back to the original function. And then uh, we end up, you know, in most cases, we end up with a system of equations. And that will give us the, the um, basically our coefficients, all right? For, that are being used in that uh, in, in this uh, trial function. Okay. All right. And so, like I mentioned, this is limited to this technique is limited. Okay. Um, basically, its limitations is that these coefficients have to be constant. Okay. Right. And g of x is either uh, a constant, a polynomial, um, it could be an exponential function, okay, or a, a, trig, trig, a trigonometric function, okay. Right. So I'll just go ahead and write that here. Okay, so some of the limitations. Uh, g of x, right? So g of x is a constant polynomial exponential function. Okay. Or a sine or sine or cosine. And you can have, it is possible to have a, a product of each one of these, okay? All right, uh, but this is basically, again, this is the, this technique is limited to these type of functions, okay? Um, and so, yeah, the second part would be just the sum or the product of these functions, okay? Sums or differences. Or products. Of the of, of these functions. All right. Okay, so let's um, so let me so before we do an example here, or before I show you an example, um, let me show you the list of trial functions, okay? So let's see. Do the screen here. So this is available. Um, during here, yeah, okay. So these are available um, on, my, uh, on my blog site, okay? Um, but the idea here is that here's g of x, okay? And then here is the, um, the form that you're gonna choose, okay? So that represents y, y and p, the particular part, or the particular solution, okay? And, and so then, okay, if, if the right-hand side is one, or any constant for that matter, um, then you're just going to uh, use, you're just going to represent that with some kind of variable, okay, with some kind of uh, constant. So it doesn't matter what letter you use here, you can use any letter. I'm just using A here as an example. Okay. Um, and then if you have a linear function, something like 2x, right? Uh, and even though you don't have like 2x plus 1 or 2x minus 1, okay, you're still going to use this representation. 
Okay, so you have to you always keep in mind that you're using the general, uh, using the most general case, right? So whether it's 2x or 5x plus 7, um, it's going to both have this form, okay? And then you can extend this idea for higher, for higher degree polynomials. For example, like 3x squared minus 2, then you want to use this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Again, even though we don't have an x term here, um, you still got to use the most general form. So it's very similar. Um, it's very similar to uh, the partial fraction decomposition technique. And then here again, we have cubic. Right? We have a degree tree polynomial. And even though the x squared term is not there, we still have to uh, place that in there. Okay. Uh, for sine and cosine, okay. Um, the arguments, so the arguments will, you have to use the same arguments, okay? But then again, you have to change the coefficients, okay? So for example, if you have two, two times sine four X, then it's gonna be A cosine four X plus B four sine X, okay? And it doesn't matter whether you put, again, it doesn't matter the letters as long as they're distinguishable, okay? So you don't wanna use, so for example, you don't wanna use A here and A here, okay? It's gonna, yeah, it's obviously it's not gonna work out. Okay. All right. And the other thing is that, okay, if you are using sine or cosine, then you must include both the cosine and sine functions. Okay. Um, if you don't do that, okay, if you don't include um, these, if you don't include the other function, then what happens if you just use sine, for example, and you substitute back into the original problem, it's going to um, basically the system of equations that you end up with is not going to be. Um, it's gonna you're gonna get a contradiction, okay? So make sure that if you're using either sine or cosine, be sure, all right, uh, be sure that you include both of those, okay? Both the sine and cosine function, okay? And then the other reason for that um, is because cosine sine turn out to be literally independent of each other. And that's not, that's not terribly difficult to show using the Ronskian idea. Okay. Um, if you have an exponential form, so meaning that you have log of, uh, sorry, uh, not, sorry, uh, base e, okay, the natural base, okay, then you're going to use, you're going to keep the same argument, okay? So if that's 4x, this is going to be 4x here. If that's minus 2x, that's going to be minus 2x, okay? The only thing that, the only uh, new part will be the constant, okay? So if you have, again, so if you have two times e to the five x, this is gonna be two e to the five x, okay? So just as you did with these, you keep the same argument, okay? And then here, the rest is, um, if you have a common, if you have a product of combination of functions. So in number nine, you have a linear function and an exponential function. So basically you just using this rule back up here, Okay, so you have ax plus b and then times e to the 5x. Okay, so the constant here, all right, um, we don't need to throw in a, another letter here because that's already taken care of um, for this part. Okay? And then again, if you have a if you have a second degree polynomial in front of let's say e to the 5x, then you have the general form here, ax squared plus bx plus c times e to the 5x. Okay? If you have a combination of the exponential function and a trig function, then you, again, you have to keep in mind that you have to include the sine and cosine. So you'll have e to the three x, okay, in both of these terms, and you would have sine four x in one of them and cosine four x in the other one. And then you would have different coefficients. Okay? Likewise, the same thing if you have something like this. Okay? If you have five x squared times sine four x, then you need to put the general form here. Ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, you have cosine four x, and then the other one you have sine four x. And again, so you have to use different letters here. Okay, so over here you have ex squared plus fx plus b. Okay. And so if you have something like this for the last one, you have x times e to the three x times cosine four x. Then, uh, from you have to again keep in mind that you need the cosine and sine function. Okay. 
So you're going to have e to the three x on each one of these. Okay, you're going to have a cosine four x, sine four x, and then you have to put a x. You have to put the general form a x plus d on on both of these. Okay, so meaning that you have this form, this general form, and then over here you have the general form. So, but then again, you have to use different letters. Okay, because we have two terms here. Okay. Uh, all right. And by the way, so um, remember that that we're solving for, right? You first solve for the homogeneous solution. So when this function is, you're setting this uh, equal to zero, okay? So let's assume that you get, you know, you, you get your solutions. Let's say it's y1 and y2. And what happens is that if, okay, all right, if your general, right, if your initial guess or your, if your trial function, which is going to be based off this, if your trial function contains um, a function from the homogeneous solution, then what you have to do is multiply that term by x, okay? So that is what, uh, that is basically what this says here. So if any, right, if any y of p contains terms, okay, if any y of p contains terms that duplicate terms in y of h, meaning that, okay, if your particular solution, okay, if, right, and that's based on this, if that solution contains terms included in here, then y of p must be multiplied by, let's see, so you start with x, okay? So when it is one. And again, if, if there's still, if you, if, you know, if there's still contained, right? If you still have another term, right? If you have a duplicate term in here, then again, you have to multiply by another x. So you continue to multiply by x until you no longer have the duplication, okay? And we'll, I'll go through this, uh, I'll go through an example of that, okay? So that's just something you have to be careful of. All right, let's all right, let's do a, an example here. So let's say we want to solve okay, this uh, differential equation. All right, so we have y double prime plus 4y prime minus 2y equals to 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. Okay, so again, so we have constant coefficients here, 1, 4, minus 2, okay? And then we have a degree 2 polynomial here. So the first thing is to solve for the homogeneous part. Okay. So you let the right-hand side be zero. Okay, so now to solve this, Right. We need to formulate our characteristic equation. So that is done by, right? Um, so you let m be the first derivative, m squared is the second one. Okay, so the order, right, the degree here corresponds to the order of the derivative. Okay. Okay, so um, we can go ahead and to solve this, we can go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Okay. We have minus four, okay? So my negative B plus or minus B squared minus four times A, which is one times C, right? So B squared minus four AC divided by two times, in this case, one.
All right, so under the radical, uh, we're gonna end up getting 24. And uh, we're gonna end up getting two distinct real solutions here. So this is gonna be, so we can break this down. This will be two radical six, okay? And so that will reduce to, uh, let's go down here. So we're gonna get minus two plus or minus root six, okay? So there's our two uh, distinct solutions, okay? All right, so then that is, so that is for case one. So we have y equals two, or in this case, y of h. So it's gonna be C1e to the minus two plus root six plus C2e e to the minus two. Okay, oh, so I just need one of these plus here. And here it can have minus. Okay. And we need an x. Okay, so that is using that uh, case, using case two. And okay. And sometimes, you know, we can go ahead, if you want, you can go ahead and factor out the negative here. Okay. That doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, okay. So there's our homogeneous solution. Okay. All right. So now we have to solve for the uh, for this part. Right? Okay. So that's the uh, new material. Okay. So this is a second degree polynomial. So based on that, um, we, our trial function will be this, okay? Um, let's go over, yeah, let's go over here. Right, so our trial function, so I'm gonna call that y of p. It's gonna be ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. okay, so what we have to do now is we have to take successive derivatives of this and then plug it back into here and then equate that to this one. Okay. And that will allow us to solve for these coefficients and constant here. All right, so let's go ahead and take the derivative here. So we're gonna get two times a times x plus b, and then obviously the derivative of c is just zero. Take the second derivative, and so we get two a here. All right, so we're gonna plug all that back into the, um, right into here, okay? Okay. So it's a little, it is, I admit, it's a little bit time consuming, right? Uh, but um, a lot of times um, terms will cancel out and then you can consolidate it and then end up with a system of, of, of equations. All right, so let's start plugging these back in. Okay. Um, so the first, this one's not too bad actually. Um, so substitute that to there. Okay, we're gonna get two A. And then plus four times two a x plus b. So again, that is the first derivative. I'm plugging it back into there. Okay, and then minus two times your original trial function. And remember, this is all going to be equated to. Uh, the right-hand side there. 
So in a retrospect, it is kind of similar to, um, a little bit similar to the uh, partial fraction decomposition, right? Uh, because if you remember with that technique, you're basically taking the rational function, separating it, and then you're sort of uh, consolidating it into a general form. And then you have to sort out the pieces, right? So um, yeah, so there is some similarities here. Okay. Um, okay, so let me, let me fix this here. So I can make sure I have enough space. All right, so let's go ahead and um, start combining things or distributing and combining here. Um, so we're going to get 2a plus 8ax plus 4b right? minus 2ax squared minus 2bx minus 2c. Uh -huh. This is all equal to this. Or in other words, we want to find a, b, and c such that get um, exactly this okay so you have to be when you're doing these problems you got to be really careful um even i make you know like even sometimes i'll be working these out and i'll make a little tiny mistake and have to go back and change it it's gonna be like a sign or, or maybe a left out number okay so you have to really be re really really careful with these okay? all right so i'm just double checking here okay even though i have everything written out it's still a good idea to check all right. Okay. All right. So now, so here's the strategy, right? So what we want to do is we want to take and consolidate all the x squared terms, right? All the x terms and then all the constants. And that's going to give us, or basically that's going to, uh, we can use that to basically give us or provide us with a set of equations, a system of equations. Okay. All right. So, okay, we're going to have Looks like we only have one a squared term here. Okay. I'm going to use something I do in my pre-calculus class. So for e, I use so I have I'm going to use different colors here. So we have x squared term. Uh, we have an x term here. So I use purple for that. And then we have the constants. So the constants are the terms without x. Okay. All right, so we have minus two a x squared. Right? Okay, we have that one. Okay, and then we have the x term. Um, so that has eight a and minus two b. I went ahead and took out the, uh, or factored out the X, okay? And then we have the constants. 2A, 4B, and minus 2C. Okay, so now you can start to see the idea here, right? So we have okay, so we have our x squared term, right? We have our x term here, and then we have our constant. So this again, so this is going to give us a system of equations, okay, particularly a system of linear equations. And so let's do that up here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to I'm going to take this and write it here. There you go.
Okay, so let's go back over here. Okay, so we did the first step already. We solved for the homogeneous part. And um, here, right, this is where we're solving for the non-homogeneous part. Okay, we're trying to obtain the uh, particular solution. Okay, so the equations we have, okay, um, so basically we pair these up. So we have 2a, 2a minus, sorry, minus 2a gets paired up with the coefficient in front of x squared. And then we have minus, sorry, uh, aa minus 2b, that's the coefficient in front of x. And then finally, for the uh, for the constants, we have this one. Okay, so we end up getting three equations, three unknowns, which if you've taken linear algebra, then you know that um, you have to have at least three equations uh, to, uh, right, if you're trying to solve for uh, three variables. Okay. Or even in pre-calculus, they talk about that idea. Okay. All right, so here's what we have. Okay, um, so we have minus two a equals to two. Obviously, that's going to give us a equals to minus one. Um, we have a a minus two b equals to minus three, okay. and then we have two a. Okay, 2a plus 4b minus 2c equals to 6. All right. So since a is minus 1, then we can just simply substitute to here. Okay. Um, and then we end up getting this. Okay. So that's going to become minus 8 minus 2b equals to negative 3. Minus 2b is going to give us, uh, let's see, we get yeah, 5. Okay. And then we get, yeah, so, and then we end up getting uh, minus 5 halves. Okay. So now we know, right, we have a and we have b. Okay, so then simply we can uh, we can simply put a and b into here into the third equation to solve for c. So we get minus two. Uh, this is going to be minus ten minus two c equals to six. Okay. And then we end up, right, we're going to get from here, we end up getting minus 12 minus 2c equals to 6. Uh, this is going to give us 2c right, um, equals to, this is going to give us minus 18 here. And so therefore, c has to be minus 9 or negative 9. Okay. So we found all the coefficients. Okay. okay, so this tells us that um, our particular solution okay, is going to be, okay, so our particular solution is going to be yp equal to, okay, we have minus x squared, minus 5 has x, minus 9, okay? All right, so then what we do is we basically take the homogeneous um, solution and the particular solution, and we add them together to get the um, overall, the, what's called the general solution. Okay, okay so therefore, <laughs> Right, the general solution is going to be y equals 2, y of h plus y of p. 
Okay, so y of h was here. T1e to the to minus two plus root six times x plus c2 e to the minus two plus radical six times x and then plus the particular part. All right, there's our general solution. So yeah, these do get these kind of these kind of problems do get a little bit um, they do get a little bit long sometimes, uh, but you know uh, that is the nature of these um, you know that's the nature of these kind of uh, problems in the differential equations. That the more you know the more complicated the problem gets. The, Usually the, the techniques, you know, also get more complicated. But to be honest, it's really, it's really not too bad. Okay? Just a, a, most of it's just, uh, just algebra. Okay. Let's see if I have another one here. Okay, let's look at another example here. By the way, this is, if you've taken differential equations, okay? Um, sorry, <laughs> that if you've taken, sorry, linear algebra, um, then you probably see there is uh, there is a similar idea here. Um, if you recall again from linear algebra, um, if you have a right, you have your homogeneous solution right or homogeneous system. Let's say a x equal to zero, and right. If you remember, um, you're always going to get the trivial solution, right? And then um, if in that and that would tell you that the columns are literally independent. Okay? If you don't get the if you don't get the unique solution. Sorry, if you don't get the trivial solution, okay. If you get infinite solution, then you end up, and that basically tells you that the columns of the matrix are literally dependent on each other. Okay? Furthermore, right? If you have a x equals to b, where b is not zero, right? So that means you have a non-homogeneous system. Then, if you recall, the solution, right? The solu the general solution of that system contains the trivial solution, right? It contains the solution for the homogeneous part, okay? Um, whether, it's, uh, whether it's unique, right? Whether you get the zero vector or if you get infinite solution set, okay? All right. So there is some similarities to this, to the linear algebra and to what we're doing here, right? In terms of, and if you think about it conceptually, okay? All right, so let's look at another example. So let's say we want to solve this. We have y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y equals to 4x minus 5 plus 6x times e to the 2x. So slightly more complicated, okay? which is not always a bad thing. All right, so the first thing to do, okay, is to solve for your homogeneous solution. All 
Good. Okay, so to do this again, all right, uh, we basically formulate the characteristic equation. So we have m squared minus 2m minus 3 equals to 0. Unlike the previous example, this one is factorable. But if you, you know, if you want to use the quadratic formula, then that's fine. Okay. Quadratic formula is like the most general way to do these or to solve for these type of equations, specifically for degree two. Um, but again, we can go ahead and factor this. Uh, this is going to be m minus one times m. And we have minus three here. So that's going to be, so we need, let's see, uh, plus. So we need plus three, but then we have minus here. So this would be minus, and then this should be plus. Okay. All right. So from there we get, right, we have m equals to minus one and m equals to three. Okay. So we get two distinct real solutions here. So therefore, y of h. Going to be equal to c1 okay, e to the minus x plus c2 e to the 3x. And again, it doesn't matter, you could put three here and then minus one here, right? It doesn't really matter. So that idea is that you're taking, you're getting your two, you're getting your two solutions and then taking the linear combination of those, right? So this forms the basis, right? This is the, what's called the basis of the homogeneous solution. Um, this two, right? These are the bases, and then you take the linear combination. So this is really just so every solution is in the span of this. Okay, is in the span of these two. Okay. All right. So there's our right. There's our homogeneous solution. All right. Now, so now comes the hard part. We have to solve for the uh, particular solution. Let's see if I can put that here. Okay. So, right, so now we have this, right, which is obviously different from zero, right? All right, so we have a polynomial in there, right, specifically a degree one polynomial. And we have a product of a um, of a polynomial and an exponential here. Okay. All right, so what are we going to use for trial function? Okay. All right, well, it's going to be so what you do is you just take one piece at a time. Okay. So for a particular for a particular part, um, you're going to have, right? So let's start with this. You're going to have ax plus t. Okay, that's for that part. And then we're going to have uh, this part here. So that is, okay, we're going to have um, using that, using those general formulas I showed earlier, okay, the trial functions, we're going to have 
um, CX. Okay. Okay. So CX plus D times E to the two X. Okay. All right, and then we can go ahead and let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and write uh, simplify this a little bit. Although it really doesn't matter, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and distribute the e to the two x. Okay. Okay, uh, all right. So now, okay, so check to make sure, it looks like, um, all right, so uh, make sure that we don't have any duplicate terms in here, okay? So what I mean by that, right, we have e to the two x here, uh, but we're okay because this is, this argument here is three x and here's minus x. So let's just say, for example, if we had, let, let's say this was 3x, then we'd have to multiply this term by x. So that way it's distinguishable from this one, okay? So like I said, we'll do a specific example on that, um, uh, for that type of, uh, for that type of uh, situation. Okay, we'll do that in the next problem. All right, so here's the form, we're okay. We, again, we don't have any duplicate terms here. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, go ahead and take our um, successive derivatives and then plug them back into here and equate it to this one. Okay, so let's do this. Yp prime. So we're going to get a. Uh, let's see, obviously this term b the derivative b is constant is constant, right? So it goes to zero. So it's going to give us zero, and then we have to use here we have to use the product rule. Okay, so you're gonna get plus C. So CX being the first one, E to the two X being the second function. So taking the derivative of, of CX, we get C times E to the two X plus the derivative of E to the two X, which is two times E to the two X times CX. So I can write it this way. Okay. And then plus 2d times e to the 2x. Okay. So you, right? So taking the derivative of this, you get 2 times e to the 2x and times d. Okay. So again, you got to make sure, you got to make sure your derivatives are correct. Otherwise, um, obviously, then uh, things, you know, those aren't correct, then things are gonna, not going to work out uh, later on. All right, now we need we need the second derivative. So that's good. So derivative a is a zero. So we're going to end up getting take the derivative of this term. We get two times c e to the two x. Again, we have to use the product rule here. Okay? So we're going to get two c times e to the two x plus. Uh, four times c x e to the two x plus four d e to the two x. Okay, so just to double check myself again, I always like to just uh, always double check. I'll just make sure there are any mistakes here, and everything looks good. Okay, again, just using the product rule here. Okay, Get these two. All right, so we're ready to plug everything in. All right. Okay, so we have our second derivative. And by the way, let's see. Sometimes, sometimes we're able to combine terms here, but uh, we don't have that here. Okay, so um, so basically, we have uh, we have this form to work with. So plugging everything in. Okay, so we're going to plug it back into uh, into here. Okay. 
We have 2C e to the 2X plus two times C e to the 2X plus four times C times X e to the 2X plus four times D e to the 2X. Okay. So just kind of recopying, just basically taking this and copying it down here uh, because of because eventually some things will cancel out. And then we have to take minus two times y prime. So let's do that on the next slide. All right, so let's see. Uh, so we have minus, okay, so minus two times y prime. So here's y, here's y prime. So we're gonna get minus two a, minus two c e to the two x. Uh, minus 4c x e to the 2x minus 4d e to the 2x. Okay. okay. Again, just cross checking with my notes here. So make sure. Uh, let's see. All right. So that looks good. And then we have minus 3 times y. So minus 3 ax. Minus three times B, minus three times CX e to the two X, minus three D e to the two X. It's a lot of terms here, obviously, uh, but some things, uh, it looks like some things will cancel out. And we're going to equate this to um, do this. Okay? All right. Okay, so like I mentioned, there should be some things that cancel out here. I probably you already see what they are. Probably you probably already see that here. Um, so let's see. Four. So this was going to cancel out with it. this one. Uh, we have let's see two C. This one cancels out with this one. And let's see. I think there's, let's see, one, two. Probably one more out oh, here. This one and this one. All right, let me just double check here. So we have this one cancels out, this one cancels out, and this one cancels out. Uh, and I think that is it. Okay. All right, so here's what we left, here's what we're left with. Okay, so we have the one, two, three, four, five, six terms should be one, two, six. Yep, okay. All right, so we have minus three AX starting with starting with this one. Minus three B, uh, minus three C X E to the two X plus two C E to the two X. So basically I have this term, this term, this term, and then this term, and then we have this term. All right, so that obviously helps a little bit. Okay, so same strategy that we did before. You want to pair up uh, the same type of functions and then line those up with the ones over here. Okay. All right, uh, let's see. So, okay, we have, let's see, minus 3b. Should be a minus two a term in there. Oh, I think I need to put the minus two a in here. Yep, 
Okay, let me put that back in. So there is a so there's a minus two a here. So I'll just go ahead and put that in the front. You see, that's what I mentioned, right? You have to be really careful with these. So just to double check, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now we can start to pair things up. Okay. So minus three ax. And then, right? Okay, so we have just this one. Okay. And then we have the constants. And then we have um, the x times e to the 2x. And then we have, let's see, e to the 2x terms. So that's so these are coming from here. All right. Okay, so let's start to pair these up. Okay, so let's see, we have the, the X term here. And then we have the constant. Okay. And then we have the X times E to the two X term. And then finally, the e to the 2x term. Let's see. Okay, uh, let's see. Did I? Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, so that's correct. So, So basically, when this happens, um, you don't have an e to the, so we don't have this term over here. So basically it's gonna be paired up to zero. Right. So I'll just, I'll just write that in. I'll put that in as a placeholder. Okay. Good. So, so again, if that's, if you end up getting a function that's not over here, then obviously it's going to be paired up to zero. Okay. All right, so we have um, how many variables, how many constants we have here? We have A, B, C, and D. So, yep, so it looks like we have four equations, right? Four linear equations, um, which is sufficient enough to solve uh, for the four variables here. All right, let's write those up. All right, let's let's do that over here. And then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how, in case, I, probably some of you know how to do this out there. Um, so you can actually solve a linear system on the calculator. Um, so I think it's I think it's worth some time to go through that uh, because some of these problems you'll get like five or six unknowns, okay? And doing it by hand is a little bit tedious, okay? Um, you can also do this in Octave, right? Okay, um, that was one of the assignments that we looked at earlier. Okay, uh, but I'll show you how to do this on the calculator, okay? um, at least I mean for the uh, 
for obtaining these coefficients. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and uh, solve this. All right. So I'm going to put. All right. Uh, I'm going to move all this here. I'm going to do the. I'm going to put the equations here. Okay. So just recopying the homogeneous solution. Okay, all right, so we have Basically, we have that minus 3a is equal to 4. Okay. And um, we have minus 3b, okay. minus 2a is equal to which one? To minus five. And then we have 2c minus 3d. That is going to be equal to, um, that's equal to zero. Okay. And then for the other one, let's see, we have uh, three, let's see. Uh, minus three c x sorry minus three c equal to six. So essentially, we have four linear equations and four unknowns. Okay. So it's not too bad actually. Okay. So you're going to get on this one. We obviously have a equals to minus four thirds. And then from here, right, we have C equals to negative two. Okay. And then since we know A is minus four thirds, and this is going to be minus three B minus two times negative four thirds equals to minus five. Okay, so we get to minus three B here, uh, minus eight thirds, actually that becomes positive eight thirds equals to negative five. And from there, uh, we're gonna end up getting B equals to Moving this over, divide by negative three, we end up getting 23rd bytes. Good. And then finally, uh, for this equation, okay, here. So since C is negative two, we substitute negative two in there minus 3d equals to zero. Um, that will always see be, so we're gonna get minus 3d equals to four. And so d equals to minus four thirds. Oh, there we go. Okay, um, so those are your coefficients. Right. Okay, so going back up here. Okay. All right, so we're going to plug all those back into here. So we end up getting, so I'll write that here. Um, so A was what, minus four thirds. So we get minus four thirds X. B was 23 ninths. Plus, C was negative two. 
D was minus four thirds times E to the two X. All right, um, okay, E. All right, look at that. Just double checking here. Everything looks good. So there's your, right? There's your particular solution, okay? So we have our homogeneous solution, right? Or in other words, our uh, complementary solution, okay? And our particular solution. Now, we just basically add them together to get the general solution. Okay. So let's, um, let's see, let's erase this part here. Okay, so our general solution is this. Remember, it's the it's the homogeneous part plus the particular part. I better make some more space for this one. We're gonna have c one e to the minus x plus c two e to the three x. Okay, and then minus four thirds x plus 23 ninths. Okay. Um, minus, I'll go ahead and distribute this 2x times e to the 2x. Make some more space here. There's a, there's, a um, there's kind of a saying in math that as you, you know, as the same in engineering, as you get higher up in your math courses or engineering courses, uh, the work you do, you start, so you have to like turn the page to work this way because the equations get so long. Okay, so we have minus two X times this one and then minus four thirds E to the two X. So that is, right, that is the final solution, the general solution, okay? All right. And uh, yeah. All right, so what I want to do here um, is again, I mentioned earlier that if you're given a, if you're given a system here, you can actually solve for these. Um, you can solve this um, using your calculator. Okay? Um, some of you may have seen that before, but I, you know, it doesn't hurt to go through it here. All right, so what we need to do is to write this into matrix form, okay? Uh, because we're gonna use the, uh, we're gonna utilize the matrix function um, or the matrix, I should say the matrix tool in the TI calculator. Okay, okay so I'm gonna resolve this. Okay. All right. So, um, and let me, let's see. Yeah. So let's, let's go ahead and I'm going to, so let's go ahead and write this into, um, into, or take this set of equations, particularly this uh, linear set and write it as a, um, as a matrix system. Okay. So if you've taken linear algebra or even they do, they, well, or um, if you've taken, at least, or if you're taking pre-calculus, um, then you may have seen that there, okay? Um, all right, so, okay, we're going to take this and express it, put it into a matrix form. Okay, so, what we do is we, we're gonna basically create what's called a coefficient matrix. So that is a, basically a matrix is just a storage for for vectors. That's all really. That's that's for column vectors. Okay, that's really how you're supposed to think about this. Okay, 
Um, and so then we're going to have the coefficients for A, coefficients for B, C, and D, and so on. So, okay, so we have minus 3A, sorry, minus 3. Um, we have minus 2, okay. Um, there is no A in here, so we put 0 there as a placeholder, and then 0, okay? there's no A here. Okay. The next one we say is, uh, we can say uh, B, right? So there is no B in here, okay. Uh, here we have minus 3. There's no B variable in here, and then we have, um, and then there's no B here. Okay. So now let's go to C. And so C, there is no C here. There's no C in the second one. Uh, we have two here, and then minus three here. And then finally for D, okay, there's zero here, zero here, uh, minus three, and then zero here. So oh, this is what's called the coefficient matrix, okay? And then you have what's called your solution vector, okay? So because, because of the way, um, the way that matrix multiplication works out, sorry, matrix, sorry, matrix vector multiplication is that the order, the order of these columns is, is important, all right? Actually, it's, well, you can put them in any order you want, but you have to keep in mind you know, you have to keep that in mind when forming this. So since we put A here, then A must go here. B is going to go here. C is going to go here and D. Okay. So this is what's called our solution vector. And then we have the right-hand side. Okay. So that's four minus five, zero, and six. Okay. So that is basically our linear system written in the form of a matrix system. Right. So each one of these is basically what's called a column vector. Okay. So again, we have this is for A, this was for B, C, and D. So just double check here. Okay. okay. For C and then for D. Okay. All right. Okay, so by the way, right, this is in, in a general sense, um, in a lot of the upper level uh, courses or even in linear algebra, they call this, they usually represent this as A. Uh, not to get confused with this A here, but this is referring to the matrix A. And then this is the solution vector X, and um, this is sometimes referred to as your, your B vector. So this is something I ask in my linear algebra class is that, um, does anybody know why they refer to this as B? Um, I'll give you, if you wanna pause here and think about that. Okay. Um, but it turns out that historically this was the B vector because in a lot of the applications, um, specifically engineering applications, um, these systems right, are formed, right, whether you're doing a simulation or some kind of model, and it turns out that the boundary conditions, all right, the boundary conditions um, are formulated or are related to the right-hand side of, of this equation, right? The values here on the right-hand side come from the boundary values. So B, right, B standing for boundary, okay? So B for boundary. So that's a, that's a kind of a his, historical fact of why this is traditionally called the B vector. Uh, we don't have to call it the B vector, we can call it anything, but that's sort of like, that was some terminology that's just kind of remained, uh, it's kind of stuck around for what, for like 30 or 40 years, okay? Um, okay, but we have, all right, so we have our matrix system here, okay? And so what we can do, there's a couple ways to solve this, and again, if you take a linear algebra, then you've seen those, so there's like, um, various ways you could use, all right? You can um, basically, you know, one of the theorems in linear algebra is that if this is, if this is solvable, if there's a unique solution, then that means this matrix must be convertible, okay? So that would be a way to solve this, take A inverse and multiply by this. Um, a more general way, 
Because in, in ideally, we don't like to deal with inverses because they're computationally very expensive to do, um, number, like in the numerical sense. Okay. Um, the, so the other way is to do what's is to put this right is to take this matrix and augment it with this vector. Okay. And then create what's called an basically an augmented matrix, and then do what's and then go through and use what's called elementary row operations to transform or to row reduce that matrix into um, into echelon form. Okay. So you get basically what's called reduced row echelon form. So that's how we're going to approach it here. And then so I'm not going to so we're not going to go through the specific elementary row operations, but there's like so. There's a way to do this on your calculator, okay? So this, okay, we can go ahead and augment. We can take this matrix and augment it with this vector. Okay, so just making sure everything's good here in terms of the signs, and then we have, right, and then so we take, again, we take this coefficient matrix and augment the, this uh, B vector. So this is what we're going to put into the calculator, and then it's going to basically, um, there's, there's some underlying theorems here, uh, because it turns out that if these columns are literally independent of each other, then um, this should row reduce to the identity matrix. And then over here, um, that will give our, our solutions. Okay, so I'm going to bring up calculator here. So let me go ahead and share the screen here. All right. So we have our right. We have our matrix. Okay. So um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put we're going to put that matrix into here. So we're going to have we go to second matrix. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and so we have different um, you know different variables of where to put this into. So we're going to go into edit. I'm going to store this into A. Okay. So the matrix we're working with is um, it's a four by five. Okay. So it's always rows by columns. So we have four rows and then five columns. All right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put those in. Okay. So we have minus one. Sorry, uh, minus three and then zero. Zero, zero, and then we have four. Okay. The next one we have minus two. And then negative three. And 
Zero. And then negative five. And then we have zero. Zero and then two. And negative three. And then zero. Okay, so last row, we have zero, zero, uh, minus three, and zero, and then six. Okay, so to get out of this hit second mode, that's gonna basically quit out of this, out of this matrix program. Okay, and let's just double check to make sure we put the entries in correct. So we go to second matrix and hit enter and then enter again. And there's our, okay, there's our matrix. Okay, so just double check looking everything over. So let's see, negative three, negative two, three, five, zero, zero, two. Okay, zero and then zero, zero. So everything looks good. So then what we're gonna do Okay, I'm going to clear the screen here. Okay, uh, we're going to go back into second matrix and then go to math, and then you're going to scroll down until you see something called RREF. So that stands for reduced row echelon form. Um, so the calculator will do that for us. So basically, it just consists of, of doing a sequence of elementary row operations. And if you've taken linear algebra, then you probably recall that. Okay, and then we're going to go back. We need to select the matrix. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's do that. Select the matrix. And then hit enter. And then what you can do here is we can go into math and then uh, we can convert those into, uh, put those solutions into rational form. All right, and so, there it is, right? So we said that A was minus four thirds, okay? Uh, B was 23 ninths, C was negative two, okay? And D was negative four thirds, sorry, negative four thirds, okay? All right. So there's the identity matrix, which is basically um, it's a square matrix uh, with ones on a diagonal. Um, but really the identity matrix is more of a storage for the standard basis vectors. Okay, um, if you think about it conceptually. All right. So this is A, so A is equal to that, B is equal to this, C is equal to negative two, D is equal to minus four thirds, okay? All right. So again, just to show you what I did there, right? Uh, we put in the entries for the matrix. So you go back into second matrix, go to math, scroll down and to see R, R, E, F. Okay, don't do REF to REF because you want the identity matrix. Okay, enter, and then you have to go back into set the matrix, select the matrix, and then enter. And then we can go uh, and we can convert these into uh, convert our values into rational form. And there it is. Okay. Okay. So it's a, it's it's very, uh, it's very convenient to use this uh, because you can uh, validate your answers okay? or you can check, you can cross, use it as a cross check to make sure you got the right values. Okay? That's something I showed to my uh, Calculus 2 students because um, obviously there they talk about using the uh, partial fraction decomposition to solve uh, some of the, um, or a way to solve um, an integral that's involving a rational function. And some of them get really large, like you know, end up like getting, having to solve for like seven or eight variables. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna go over one more example um, where you have a duplicate term. Okay. Meaning that you have the, uh, the term in the homogeneous solution, okay, and it appears 
and the particular solution. And so then you have to multiply it by, by X. All right, so let's go through one of those. So let's say you want to solve this second order differential equation. Y double prime minus two Y prime plus Y equals to E to the X. Okay, so the first thing is to, right, is to find your homogeneous solution. So from there, we can calculate the characteristic equation. Okay. And this one, right? Um, you can use a quadratic formula if you want, uh, but this one turns out to be factorable. This is just m minus one squared. And that's going to be equal to zero. So this is going to be for case two that we discussed uh, in the previous video. So this is going to be m equals to one. So actually, right, m equals to one with multiplicity of two. So that means for our particular solution, okay. Sorry for, our, uh, sorry, for our homogeneous solution, okay? Uh, we're gonna have C1e to the x plus C2x times e to the x. So remember that you have to, right, you, you have this part from here and then you have to multiply this by x, okay? Uh, so, there's our, so there's our homogeneous solution. Okay, so now let's look for the um, next thing is to look for the particular solution. Okay. All right, so we have e to the x there. So um, the general form of that is just going to be a constant times e to the x. Okay. All right, so let's do that over here. Okay, so there's the general form. Okay. All right, so. Now, notice that we have a duplicate term here. E to the X, right, um, is basically here, okay? So if you, if you basically, if you, if you use this, if you take this and plug it into there, um, you're gonna get, you're gonna get some kind of nonsense, right? Um, it's, you know, you get maybe, you'll get a contradiction saying like A equals one and, and A equals zero, okay? so. Um, if that happens, that tells you that there's something wrong with your, uh, with the particular, with this, sorry, with the setup of the particular uh, solution, okay? So then what we do is we multiply it by X, okay? So this is, right, so we have a duplicate term here. So we multiply by X.
However, again, we have a little bit of an issue here because um, x to the e, x times e to the x is also here, right? So again, there's another duplicate term. So, okay, no problem. We'll just multiply it by uh, another x, okay? So you keep, right, you keep multiplying by x until you no longer have a duplicate term. Okay, there we go. So that is the general form of the, of the trial function that we're gonna use. Okay, um, so we need to figure, we need to take successive derivatives of this. So you're gonna have line P prime. So we need to use the product rule here. So you're gonna get two times A times X times E to the X plus A X squared times e to the x, right? So you take the derivative of this times, right, times the second plus the derivative of e to the x times the first, okay? And then we take the derivative of this to get the second order derivative. So we're gonna have two, right? The derivative of this is two a times e to the x plus two a x, e to the x. And then same thing here, use the product rule to get two times a x e to the x plus a x squared e to the x. So just a direct application of the product rule for these two, for these two functions. All right, make sure everything is good here. And now, right, comes the fun part. We put those back into there and then equate it to the right-hand side. And let's see, in this case, we can go ahead and consolidate some of those terms. So let's do that here. We have two of these, so that's gonna give us four, four, four times a x e to the x plus a x squared times e to the x. So like I said, if you want to if you want to simplify this and then substitute, and that's fine. Or you can just take you know you can just substitute in there. Doesn't matter, right? It's going to work out algebraic. So it just depends on your algebraic preference. Okay. All right. So we're going to get two a e to the x plus four a x times e to the x plus a x squared times e to the x. So that's the second derivative. And then we have minus two times the first derivative. So that's gonna give us minus four a x e to the x, and then minus two a x squared e to the x. And then we have uh, plus y, which is this one. And all of this is going to be equal to e to the x. Okay, um, so let's see if something cancels out here or if we can combine things. So let's see, we have, well, right away I can see that this is going to cancel out, which is good. Okay. And then we have ax squared. Okay, so those two. Yep, so these two, so actually um, these two are just going to give you 2ax squared e to the x, and then that's going to cancel out with this one because of the minus two here. So this, this, and this cancel out. So sometimes that happens, which is really nice. Okay. All right, so we're, so basically we're left with two times a e to the x equals two e to the x. And so therefore, right, that means two a has to be equal to one. Because right. right. you have a hidden one here. Right. And so therefore, A has to be equal to one half. Right. So there's our solution, right? Okay. So we have okay, from here, line P is going to be equal to one half X squared 
times e to the x. So therefore, our overall solution is going to be this. Okay. Uh, let's write that here. Okay, so we have this homogeneous solution plus the non homogeneous solution, uh, which is, or the particular part, which is one half x squared times e to the x. So take some more space here. Okay. There's our, right? So there's our solution. So again, keep in mind, right, that if you get a duplicate term, right, so if you look here, if, if that term is repeated in here, then you have to multiply that by x. And you keep, you keep doing that until it's no longer a duplicate term, okay? And again, you multiply by x. The reason for that is, to, um, is that you want, you know, you want these terms to be literally independent of each other, okay? Okay, so I'll stop here, okay? Um, there are some additional uh, examples and obviously in the book and in, my, uh, in the notes on my blog site, okay? And so then next time, all right, uh, we'll talk about uh, another technique um, using the Ron scan, which is known as the variation of parameters. So that technique is even more versatile because like I said, sometimes, you know, if you have a, if you have a non-homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, sometimes the right-hand side could be really, really, really very complicated. And so, you know, it would take extremely long time if you to apply this method. Um, however, like I said, we have the variation of parameters method. Okay, um, so that's even a that's that's a more versatile technique. So that's what I was. So sometimes, you know. In math, you know, we, we learn the techniques, okay? And then um, you're learning like, specific, you know, you're learning a certain technique and then it only, it, there's some uh, limitations on that technique. And then you learn the next, you know, as you go up, right? Uh, you, you learn another technique and therefore it can be, that's more versatile, right? You can use that for a larger number of functions. And basically that's how um, a lot of the, um, how math, the, a lot of these math te mathematical techniques work is that the higher up you go in mathematics, uh, the more versatile the um, techniques become. Okay. Right. So, okay, um, I'll go ahead and stop here. All right. And then um, I'll see y'all next time.